Thanks for joining us for one final episode of Inside Franklin and Marshall Wrestling. I'm Brad Waltman here for GoDiplomats.com, joined by Franklin Marshall Head Wrestling Coach Mike Rogers. Mike, thanks for th joining us for this uh, last time of the season. Yep. Uh, so we're going to wrap up season a little bit today. Uh, you know, you said in a Facebook post last week um, that, you know, this season had its up and downs, but overall you made some good steps forward for the program. Uh, one of those steps had to have been qualifying uh, two guys for the NCAA tournament. That's something the program hasn't done since 1994. So just kind of talk about the importance of that. Um, I think it was a good way to kind of show that, you know, um, you know, more than just Rick can get there. Uh, I think some of our, especially our younger guys, I think they look at Rick as kind of unique and special. He can do a lot of things that no one else can. And I think they don't, I, I think as an athlete, it's hard to relate to that. Um, someone that, that, you know, gifted in a lot of different ways. I think Pelusi, um, not to take any away from his athletic ability, but uh, he's, he's, you know, the, I, I'd say the, the the typical average Joe, you know, um, that worked hard. He was our backup, a 97 pounder last year, to being um, an NCAA qualifier, beating two, three ranked kids to do that um, nationally, ranking national ranked guys. And I think um, the team can look at Pelusi and kind of see like, wow, you know, we we can do that. We can relate to Pelusi and and um, you know how he was able to to get to where he was able to get to um, with a lot of hard work. And and the big thing with him, he you know, him with uh, Coach uh, Borgia uh, had a game plan. They stuck with it. They worked on, you know, one or two specific techniques, and um, and he got he got pretty far with it. So with him coming back, I think uh, he comes back with a whole different mindset, uh, a whole different um, set of goals. Once you get out there, you're, you're not the same person when coming back. You, you know, you're, you get out there, that's one thing. You're kind of almost, ah, oh, it's nice to be out here. But then the reality is of you didn't really accomplish anything out there. Um, eats at you and it, it drives you to kind of achieve higher um, and have higher standards. So, uh, again, I think for him getting out there, one, coming back with that experience, kind of helping, and I think that helps our other guys too. If, if you know, if Pelosi can get out there, I think I can do it too and, and kind of following his lead of, of finding your niche in the sport, finding your technique, and then, you know, plan your work and work your plan. Um, and he did exactly that and worked closely with Coach Borgia. So, um, I think that is going to uh, uh, carry over to the rest of the team. Yeah, so let's uh, look at Antonio's performance out there a little bit. Uh, you know, first round, faced Kyle Snyder for Ohio State, ended up winning the whole thing. Uh, you know, you really gave him run for his money there in that first period. Uh, and then, you know, next time out, he faced a kid from Columbia uh, who he, he beat the IWAs. But just overall had a really, really tough draw. But, you know, he spoke a little bit about this, but how important is it for his development moving forward to kind of face that top-level competition on big stages, things like that? Yeah, I mean uh – I think, you know, drawing uh, Snyder right off the bat, you know, one of the best guys in the country and potentially one of the best guys in the world um, is, is has to be somewhat intimidating. But after going through that experience, you wrestled, you know, the national champ at the NCAA tournament. Um, you stuck with him for a period and a half. Um, you had him and he, he definitely got in uh, Snyder's head a little bit, you know, because I think Snyder thought he was going to run him over and, and Pelusi uh, put up a pretty good fight. And I think... After that match, you know, who, if you can compete and wrestle on a mat with someone like that, who can you not compete against, you know? Um, so he's wrestled the best of the best. There's no one else that's going to compare to that kid. Um, so everything else in, you know, uh, just in theory is easier. Um, so that, you can't put a price tag on that experience to wrestle one of our potential Olympians, maybe a, a gold medalist. Um, and a national champ. And then coming back through Constellations, wrestling the Columbia kid, and um, you know, he lost to that kid and then beat him at the conference. It's always tough to wrestle the same kid over and over. Um, that kid made some good adjustments. Um, it, it, again, it came down to really uh, Pelusi needed to get off the bottom, and that was the big factor uh, of the match. And even though he's done some good things on, on finding his offense, he needs to do some things of errors improvement. And, Getting off the mat, getting um, his mat work, riding guys, and getting that that taken care of, because I I think you know a solid five or six of his losses came by a mat, uh, one or two points, and that's getting off the bottom and riding guys. So he knows what he needs to work on, um, and you know you never want to go out there and, and and lose, but also but losing to someone that you've beat previously, but. You know, if you follow that tournament, it doesn't really matter if you beat the guy five, six, seven times. You know, you, it comes down to beating them when it counts at that moment in time. And, and um, you know, so. Yeah, then, you know, looking at 141, uh, it's pretty well known coming to that tournament that that, that might have been the, the deepest bracket from top to bottom. 
uh, out there at the tournament. Uh, you know, pretty good reference to that. A 14 seed made it to the finals, and you know, so so looking at Rick, you know, he's dealt some really tough matchups there, and you know, things might not have worked out the way uh, that that he wanted or the program wanted. But uh, just talk a little bit about his performance. Um, you know, it, it was. You know, that weight class, I think, had the most parity, uh, parity of any weight class. I think from the number one guy to the number 15, 16th guy, anybody could have won it. And, and that also means, though, guys that were ranked high, you know, could not even place. You know, so it, it was uh, probably the most um, competitive field, I think, from top to bottom. Uh, most weights, there's one or two guys. Everyone else is chasing them. Uh, with that said, though, I, you know, with Rick's performance, I, I, he, you know, there's – like I said, I said before, and I think I put this in my Facebook, you know, you can do everything right, prepare everything, and do everything you possibly do, and things may not work out. And that's life, too. You know, you can do everything right, and uh, but there's no guarantees for anything. No one promises you. You know, no, there was no promise that he was going to be an All-American. I think he put himself in position, too. He beat two guys this season that were um, All-Americans, the ODU kid and the, and the Lehigh kid, um, both placed, and he, he beat those guys in the season. But... Um, wrestling out there at that time and, and things just didn't work out and and uh, I mean looking at his his quarterfinal match it came down to one take and he was on a shot and just you know uh, didn't finish it um, and that could have made a whole you know put him in a whole different situation in the bracket and whatnot so speculation and and looking back I think can eat you up and I, I do it probably more than anyone else I think from a coach's perspective what could have we've done differently could we prepared him differently could have we done things differently in the warm-up but like I said, you can do everything you, you, you can and, and things may not work out. But and overall, his career is, is amazing. So I, I don't want to um, just sum it all up in just, you know, one, one, uh, one event. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of his career, I mean, even before the tournament, he already solidified himself as one of the greatest wrestlers in the history, history of the program. You know, the only four-time NCAA qualifier, the only two-time EIWA champion. Uh, he holds the career wins record. He holds the top three spots in the season wins record. Uh, you know, and obviously we talked about he was an All-American back in, in 2014. Um, so just kind of, you know, we've talked about this before, but, uh, you know, what, what exactly does, do you think he means to the program? Um yeah, you know, like you, you, know, you read off his rap sheet of accomplishments, and, and you know, if you if you look at his body of work, it's impressive. I mean, anyone would die for having half of those accomplishments. And when he was an All American in 2014, I, I kind of told him, I said, that's that's something very special because that's that's an elite club that you you'll always be a part of, no matter what happens your senior year. You know, you know, and and you know, we'd always want him to be a two time All American and, and national champ. But you look at everything he's accomplished, and, and you know, just what he's done has been very impressive. So you take in the whole body of work, he, you know, you can't be disappointed with, with his overall career. Um, what he's done to their program is, is amazing. He, I think he's put, one, he's putting the program on a national level. People recognized him and, and uh, started the conversation, where is FNM, what's FNM about? And I think it also, um, for our younger guys, it, it, it set a whole different standard. You know, um, he raised the bar significantly, you know, for our younger guys to come come in and try to meet. So I think what you try to do, you set standards. And records are great, but they're they're also a carrot for guys to try to beat their win record or or be a two-time All-American or be the next national champ or let's get, you know, let's try to get three guys at the NCAA tournament instead of two. And, you know, so it's a way to kind of put a carrot or kind of set a standard for the other guys to achieve to. And he's done that. He's moved the bar up so high. Um, and not only that, he's he's um, opened us up to a lot of exposure with um, conversations, people seeing him on ESPN and, and you know, seeing his interviews. And, and it's gotten us in the doors with recruiting, and, and it's kind of allowed us to grow the program on a national level just with his exposure and what he's done. So you know, I can't say enough about, about him as, as, a, as a person on off the mat. My kids look up to him. He's a great, he's a great uh, influence on my kids. Uh, his, his mom and dad are awesome um, parents. They let us coach, and they're supportive um, and let us do our jobs. And you know, and, and you know, the, the, the kind of the, the joke on the team is, is Diva Durso. He's a little bit high maintenance, but you know what? I've been around a lot of top elite athletes. I've had all Americans. I've coached all Americans at Lock Haven American, and they're all a little bit different. You know, and there's a reason why they're different, and they're, they all have their different quirks and different, um, you know, maintenance things. And and uh, you know, Rick's no different. So it, it was it was a pleasure to coach. It was, and, you know, he and he also not the way he wrestled was exciting. And he put on a show. He just didn't win. You know, with one takedown, he, he wrestled with his whole heart and soul, 
and put everything on the line. And, you know, for me, I, I can't ask any more from an athlete as, as a human being. So, you know, we're, we're internally grateful what he's done. And even though he didn't finish the way he wanted to, I think he's going to look back years from now and be very proud. And his kids are going to be very proud down the road of what he's accomplished. And you can kind of show them what, you know, what he what he's able to accomplish. And it's great. So obviously, you know, uh, Rick's going to be a huge loss moving forward. But looking ahead next season, um, there's some excitement there. You know, Antonio comes back with a lot of that NCAA championship experience under his belt. He headlines a pretty strong group of returners. Um, you also have a pretty deep freshman class coming in that I know you and your coaching staff is excited about. So just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, with the guys coming back with, um, you know, Pelusi and Mancini and, and a lot of these other guys, uh, Josh Young, um, um, they're all hungry coming back, uh, ready to, you know, get after it and our recruiting has gone really well. I think we're going to bring in one of the largest recruiting class in numbers and one of the most talented recruiting classes on paper. Uh, we have, uh, we don't want to, you know, we have to kind of wait till regular decision just came out. So we have to kind of let that kind of all kind of play out before we put out an official statement of who's coming. But we can say that we, we brought in, we're bringing in a couple of Pennsylvania placers. We're bringing in a couple of uh, prep national placers, um, uh, you know, guys, you know, state placers, state winners. Um, and, it, you know, I think with that recruiting class and the team we have coming back, the, I think the future looks really promising um, with, with the program. We're going to have a lot of competition in the room, guys pushing each other, guys, you know, fighting for spots, um, which makes everyone tougher and better. So, um, you know, and I, I, you know, with our season, we put together one of the toughest seasons and, and put um, some of the top teams on our, our schedule and took, took our beatings at, at some point. But I think at the end of the day, we – we uh, benefit from it from having a good, you know, uh, performance at the conference, uh, and then I think we're going to look to do something similar, uh, maybe not as aggressive, um, because we're going to be pretty young. But we're going to put, you know, enough teams on our schedule that we're going to have to push and fight um, and scrap. And I think we're having good success with individuals like Pelusi and Durso and and some of those guys. But what we really need to improve on, what we're trying to do, is is build the team, get more competitive in the dual meets. We need to have five or six guys winning out of the ten, you know, bouts. Um, and that's what we're trying to do is is get more than just a, you know, one or two guys having success. We want, you know, at least you know, sixty percent of the the team, you know, having somewhat success at dual meets and also tournaments. Well, Mike, thanks a lot for uh, joining us throughout the season and offering your insight. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to keep an eye out on GoDiplomats.com throughout the offseason for all the news involving the Franklin Marshall Wrestling Program.